Hi, welcome back. Well, when I was at school uh, studying English, um, I think a lot of us in my class would have rather stick pins in our eyes than study poetry. <laughs> but, <laughs> but Micah Bornet here is uh, making poetry hip along with the whole uh, spoken word movement. Is, is that right, Micah? Well, I, I don't think I'm making poetry here, but <laughs> yeah, no, I think uh, a lot of people's stereotype of poetry and introduction to poetry is uh, kind of Shakespearean and antiquated English and uh, confusing metaphors and things like mm. that, which is, it's just hard for the general public to really feel connected to that. Mm. And do, you, that do, do you get into the, like, the dead white guys with poetry? Um, you can know, can you appreciate them? Or? When I was growing up, I had zero appreciation for them, you know, yeah. because most of the time it was... It just seemed to be from a time and a culture that was so disconnected from who I was, mm -hmm. I, I didn't feel like it had anything to say to me. Mm -hmm. um, now, as I'm older, I can appreciate it to some degree, but with spoken word, I got into it because when I was in college, a friend of mine invited me to this open mic event, he said, for spoken word. And I had I'd seen it on YouTube, but never in real life. And I went and it was poetry, absolutely, but it was uh, in, in language I could understand. You know, mm. they used modern uh, language and they talked about things that, were, that seemed relevant to, to where I was at at the time mm -hmm. and the things that I was thinking through. And so um, it, was, it was much more accessible, but also not just in uh, the, the language they used, but uh, spoken word has a theatrical element to it. So mm. it was a lot more engaging than just kind of a, a dry poetry reading where you have monotone voice the whole time. It was, there was highs and lows, roller coaster, uh, people using a lot of body language. It, it felt almost like theater. Mm. So uh, it, it struck me and the, the first time I saw it, I said, man, I'd like to give that a try. Wow. So, I mean, spoken word versus rap or hip hop, mm -hmm. where's, where's the, the connection or the, or the difference there? Yeah, yeah, they are, they're definitely popular in, in similar communities. You'll find them uh, pretty popular in urban minority communities, but they they are different. Um, spoken word often is performed without music behind, mm -hmm. and also um, it doesn't always rhyme. So there's there's elements. Uh, it's free form poetry. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's elements of it that even without rhyme can create a sense of of rhythm and poetry. Uh, repetition is used, and uh, and other other things like that. Um, but it's, I, I feel like they're cousins, hip hop and spoken word. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're related, but the biggest difference, uh, I think, from spoken word from other forms of poetry is the fact that it's written with the intent to be performed uh, with the whole body, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and it, it, you approach it different. Even, even hip hop, like, yes, it's, it's a performance and people rap live, but spoken word, I think, is a, a little more intentional about the body language mm. uh, as far as you, you, you'll write a poem, but then you'll go back and you will kind of write the body movements. and, and, mm. and So say, the gesture is as much part of, exactly. the, of the poem as the words themselves. And the exactly. Spoken word poets are very intentional about what they do with their body to, to add another layer of communication and artistry. Hmm. Um, whereas, you know, hip hop and other forms of music and things like that, a lot of times you're just kind of jumping around. Or it's not, you don't think through it as much as what you do with hmm. your body when you perform. What's, what about spiritual content? Because I know mm -hmm. like, if you just go up on the street and speak to someone about spiritual things, they might, whoa, you know. But there seems to be certain artistic mediums where you can get away with being quite forceful, even preachy. Mm -hmm. um, I think reggae, for example, reggae lyrics, you yeah. know, very spiritually spiritually inclined. Yeah. Um, and even rap and, and spoken word. Do, do you find that people will accept things, quite strong spiritual concepts in spoken word that they might not accept in normal conversation? The spoken word community is an incredibly spiritual community in the sense of, I don't say that in the Christian context, but mm -hmm. in the sense of, you will often hear people talk about um, spiritual things, whether it be uh, justice, right and wrong, um, whether it be spiritual practices of, of meditating and praying and seeking truth. Um, and that was one of the first things I realized as well. It was like, uh, this community is, is, is not afraid of spiritual conversation. Actually, they invite it. Mm. What, they, what they don't invite is Christianese. Mm. And, and what I realized was it, 
I think a lot of times as Christians, people think, oh, people as Christian artists, especially, they won't like our art because it's Christian. And it, it's just not true. Mm -hmm. um, music as well. There's a lot of genres of music that are very spiritual in the things that they discuss. Mm -hmm. But when you use language that is so particular to people who grew up in church, mm. you know, even, and I'm not just talking about That's, huge it's inside a language. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not just talking about huge doctrinal uh, terms like hypostatic union, but mm. even things like mercy, grace, redemption, mm. things that we take for, gra for granted. But when you think about the word salvation and redemption, like what does that mean mm. to someone who didn't grow up in church? Mm. They may, they may recognize the word salvation, but to a Christian, it means something different. Yeah. And so we can't just use that and expect people outside of uh, the faith to know what we mean when we say that. Mm. And so I found that in my poetry, I've attempted um, to talk about spiritual things, but to use a vocabulary that is accessible mm. to people who didn't grow up in the Christian church or culture and, and don't really know what those words Which, mean. Which of course is what, how the New Testament was written in street Greek, co co Koine Greek, yeah. Do you find that there are spiritual themes you keep returning to again and again in, in your work? Um, I think uh, hope is, is a big one. Spoken word lends itself to vulnerability, as I mentioned. Yeah. Um, but I think a lot of people can, can praise the vulnerability as if that is the, the goal. Yeah in the sense of it's like, oh, if we just get all of these things off of our chest, yeah, just spill then that'll your be guts, good. as they say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I think there's value in that, but, but the confession is not the healing. Yeah. It's the first step, you know, but after that, what do you do with that? And I think that a lot of times spoken word fails to answer that. It's just a lot of, I went through this and I was abused or I was hurt or I was broken hearted and it, it feels good to get it out. But after a while of being in that environment for a while, I thought, well, I'm glad you guys are being honest, but like, I just felt like people were commiserating. Mm. Like we would go to these open Poor mics us. Yeah, 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 and they would just, it, I always say it like this, uh, it, it seemed like the poets were saying life sucks, but it's better since it sucks for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And yeah, I was like, yeah. well, that, that Misery doesn't loves make it, company. Is exactly. It? Yeah, like yeah. that doesn't make it better. Yeah. Like, and so after that, then what? Yeah. And I think that's something that only Christians can really say something after the then what? Because, mm. I mean, as Paul said in 1 Corinthians, hey, you know, if Christ did not resurrect, our faith is futile. Yeah. Nothing matters. You know, like all it is is commiserating and making the most of death because he says, hey, if, if the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. Yeah. You know, and he says that actually is the reality. We're just trying to make the, me the best of this life that is slowly slipping away from us. Mm. He says, that's the reality if Christ didn't resurrect, but he did. So now we can step into that pain. We can step into that death and look at it straight in the eye and say, mm. where is your victory? Where is your sting? You have none. Um, and so I think that has been uh, one of the themes of, of being just as vulnerable as other poets in the community, but, but bringing something that uniquely someone of Christian faith can bring. And mm. that is hope beyond death. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So you're saying it's hurting, yeah, fair enough, but time to move on to the hope and, and the healing. Absolutely. Yeah, it's an important message, I guess, for Easter as, as much as anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now you've been here for the Manifest uh, Arts Festival. You're also um, uh, performing at Easter Fest as well, which yes. is, yeah, that should be awesome. Um, that is my latest album, it's called Alive and Ill. Alive and Ill, not live and well, live and ill, but yeah. still alive, which is important. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, you're going to come after the break and perform, is it a track from this album? Yeah, it's uh, called Dry Bones, second to last track on that album. Excellent, Dry Bones, yeah, Micah Bornet gets prophetic, coming up straight after the break. <laughs> 